Colony 9. Line up, the commander came out more, more harsh and cold than I have heard it all my prison experience. It was in Colony 9. Rumors abound about the horror condition of the prison. They appear to be true. My second prison term of five years had ended, but I had not been released. Instead, I was re-sentenced to another two years on the same charge. Then they moved me to Colony 9 to await transport to the permanent prison camp. We were in the basement. There were ten of us, all lined up along the dazzling white quarter. We faced the wall, our eyes only inch from a bright place. Blood bright glare. Arms up, the scream brought instant results as we raised our arms above our heads. Don't touch the wall. Some unfortunate men have must have the rested his arms against the wall. I flinched as I heard the thud of a night stick whacking some helpless back. I could hear Officer Slee stirring back and forth behind us. His deliberate straps echoed off the concrete floor. I had heard about this man. He was high ranking KGB officer with a good reason. He struck terror into many people's hearts. Ten inmates all bound for some miserable rotten prison cell, he mocked. We must prepare you for your future home. I will read the rules, he said in pause. Back up two steps. Place your hands against the wall. Don't move. Another game. A game to see who would comply and who would be foolish enough to make his own rules. I stepped back and leaned forward to place my hands on the wall. Spread your legs. Move your feet apart. Made us more vulnerable. Then with a great pump of ceremony, Officer Slay began to read the rules of prison. There, they were not so different from any other prison I had been in. The words were familiar as he told us exactly ha how we were to perform and what we were not allowed to do. Now, all those who volunteered agreed to these rules. Step back from the wall and go to the office to sign your complaints to the rules. You are acknowledged that you are guilty of the crimes charged against you and that you will take whatever punishment the state it has sentenced. The test was once more before me. What should I do? All prisoners were to agree that they were guilty of the charges against them. W with a clear conscience, I knew I was not guilty of the espionage against the government, of the inciting insurrection against our leaders. The crimes were included in my charges. I heard a scaffold of feet as the inmates comply. I continue with my sentence against the wall. By swirling my good eye, I could tell two others were still standing. Oh, we have a few bold ones who make, who want to make their own rules. Officer Slee sneered as he began pacing behind us. I could hear him twirkling his stick in the air. So you do not agree to my stipulation. You want to do it your own way. Sir, I heard a voice beside me. I could tell the man was young. Sir, I would like to dress you, but I can't stand this way. My arms are being beginning to swell. Oh, I felt sorry for this inexperienced young man. To even address the officer when he was not asked to speak was bad. But to ask for a favor at this time was sure to bring horrible consequences. I was right. With a roar, Officer Lee was behind the young man and beating him all along the unprotected back and legs with a moan. The young man doubled up in pain. The officer continued his miraculous assault as the young man fell to the floor, cursing and shouting. Slade kicked him in the stomach with his boots. The beating continued for a long minute. Take him away from here. I heard the sound of a young man bruising a battered body, body being dragged down the quarter. His, his moaning filled the hall. Now, there are two, still two of you left. Officer breathed some breath, came in short, bursting, panting from the, the recent exhaustion. You do not agree to, to do what I have stipulated. I did not say anything. The man further down the 
the wall was quite quiet too. I listened to the heavy breathing of Officer Slee. Finally, he stepped up to the other man. Come, come with me, he ordered abruptly. I listened to as the two men walked away. The, the other man was a agent, realizing dawn on me as I heard them leave. He did not walk like an inmate. His steps were sure and they were so was no trace of fear in his walk. When you have been prison long enough, you, you learn to tell. The very walk of prisoners is different than that of guards or visitors. The, then Officer Slee was back, standing right behind me. He began speaking slowly and cruel. So, we, we will have one who will not comply. My arms were almost completely numb. I forced my mind to think about something about other than the pain shooting down my legs. What are you waiting for? Your God to come rescue you? The question came abruptly, tingly. I could, I could hear no one else in the hall. I presume we were alone, just the two of us. I know it would be very easy for the officer to point his pistol in my back of my head and pull the trigger. There would be no witnesses. This kind of thing happens all the time. Was I prepared to die? Was I ready? My thoughts turned immediately towards heaven. Father in heaven, I pray to you. I come to you only on the merits of the precious blood of your son, shed for me on the cross. Nothing I have ever done can prepare me for facing you on the judgment throne. I command my spirit into your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Come come with me, the officer commander, reaching my consciousness as though coming through a long tunnel. I slowly pushed myself away from the wall and lowered my arms, needles of pain shooting through my arms as the blood rushed into my starved veins. I stumbled down the corridor behind sleep. When he entered a room, I followed. The twinkled stick caught my eye. Its constant motion gave it a life of its own. I looked away. I stood waiting in the middle of the room. The officer sat down behind his desk. Snarling at me, he said, You go out and come back in and and address me properly as a prisoner should address his senior, superior. I shuffled out of the room and stood in the quarter. The door closed by itself. I stood outside, praying for strength. I knew what he wanted. He wanted me to come in and salute him and tell him I was waiting for, waiting on, on him for my sins. Something told me not to comply. I was not guilty of, of this crime. I was accused of, accused of and simply could not acknowledge that I was in insurrection insurrectionist I read I read like above the door began to blame I guard hurried down the hall and con entered the office in that moment he reappeared the officer is waiting for you he scolded me I entered in again stood in the middle of the room here I am sir I said suddenly he smiled it was not a friendly smile I I had heard from the other prisoners that officer Lee smiled and it did not mean he was friendly. No, it meant that something terrible was going to happen. So this smile did not, did nothing to reassure me. Rather, it frigid, frightened me. You have come to our prison with your own set of rules. He standed in. No signs, sign paper. No proper greeting from your superiors. Twinkling, twinkling his stick, he began circling me. Scrunning every part of my body. Once again, I thought I would be beat. I did not think anything could save me at this time. He began to curse me as he walked around, still swirling the deadly stick. Suddenly, he thrust his face right into, in the front of my eyes and screamed at me, Talk! Say something! I had no idea what to say. What would I say to a madman like this? But the words began tumbling out of my mouth. Well, there are many bears that can be trained. Trained to perform tricks and act just like the trainer wants them to behave. Those bears become low, lower animals, no longer bears. He stopped in his pace and looked looked me squeakly, squarely in, in the face. I smiled slightly at him, then he said, I am not one of those bears. He cocked his head as he as my meaning sank in. Say that again, he said, evidently surprised. I'm not a bear that will stop 
to being just an animal. I am not a bear that could be trained that way. I was not sure just why I used that. All that. Sometimes inside me just prompt me with those thoughts. Plus, I want the officer to <coughs> have to puzzle over what I say. I continue in the in a circus, there are lots of training bears. They can ride bicycles, walk on ropes, and, and, and do all kinds of tricks with balls. They are even trained to box with their trainers. But I also understand that the trainer only works with a certain kind of bears. Some kind cannot be, become trained bears because they will not lose their identity. They remain bears. So here I am. I'm not a bear that can be trained by the government to think only as I am I am told to think, to act only as I am told to act. I am my person. I must live by the conscience that God has given me, though I am not in the power of the prison. However, only my body is in the power. My spirit is still free. One more sleep began walking once more sleep began walking around me. This time the time he did not twirl his stick. Hmm, a bear cannot be trained. A bear with a free spirit. Then suddenly, the interview was over. He pressed the button on his desk and a guard appeared. Take him to the hall, officiously commanded. Brisky, dismissing us with a wave of his hands.